Because future-looking statements are inherently subject to risk and uncertainty, our reminder is that you should make any purchasing decisions or investment decisions based on products that are currently commercially available. Welcome everyone, I'm Stephanie Maddox and I'm one of the product managers on our developer tooling team. Joining me today is Nate Totten, Director of Dev Tooling. Thank you for joining us to learn more about how to unlock developer productivity with modern open tools. Today we're going to show you some of our dev tools through the lens of two developers. We'll walk through a couple demos and then we'll wrap up with more info about some areas we're working on. We'll start here in Visual Studio Code. I have it all set up on my desktop and my project open. I've already installed the Salesforce extension pack that lets me develop custom code and use the Salesforce CLI directly within VS Code. A couple of the reasons we like VS Code is the marketplace of extensions and its wide use across different types of development. It enables the Salesforce community to have familiar tools, transferable knowledge, and the flexibility to customize your environment to your needs. Before I dive into the code I'm working on, let's take a quick tour of the project structure. Some of these areas will be familiar to many developers, but if you only work on Salesforce and haven't checked out our VS Code extensions yet, it might be new to you. We've made a number of updates and continue to embrace open standards to provide you the best tools possible. First, let's look at sfdxproject.json. Having this file in a directory indicates it's an sfdx project. The project configuration file is a blueprint for your project and for the outline of a package. The settings here determine the package attributes and package contents. Next, let's look at package.json. If you're a Node or JavaScript developer, this is likely familiar. Among other things, this gives you a way to manage dependencies and also includes scripts that might be needed for your project. We're using Node.js and NPM to manage these scripts and dependencies. This is how we're including tools like ESLint and Prettier. Node is not required for all Salesforce development, but with Lightning Web Components embracing web standards, Node is a natural choice and gives you more capabilities. You heard me mention a couple of third-party tools a few moments ago, and I want to expand on those. First, ESLint. It's a widely used linting tool that evaluates code for errors, coding best practices, and more. Simply put, it makes it easy to find errors in JavaScript. As a part of the LWC extension, Salesforce provides specific ESLint rules out of the box, and you can also add your own. Let's see ESLint in action. I'll open the force app directory and go to the LWC folder. This is the property filter component within the app that I'm working on. As I open this file, you'll notice some red squiggles in a few places. It seems I have a few issues with my code. If I come down here to the Problems tab, I can see the details of the issues and what lint rules I'm breaking. I can also see this info if I go back up and hover over the areas that are underlined in red. Luckily, it also gives me a quick fix option, so with just a couple clicks, I can quickly resolve those issues and improve my code. Sweet, now I'm set on that. As you look at this code, you might also be thinking that it doesn't look the best, and you're right. My spacing is a bit inconsistent and the indentation doesn't quite line up. I was in a bit of a hurry while coding this, but not to worry, Prettier can help. It's a code formatter that works with HTML, XML, JavaScript, Apex, etc. It makes all your code look nice, readable, and consistent. That's what we want, high quality code with minimal manual work. Prettier also makes source control better so that you see only true conflicts and not false positives due to extra lines or formatting differences between various authors. I can easily get this file into shape by bringing up the command palette and executing the format document command. Now you see my code is cleaned up and I can also choose to do that every time I save. Before I continue on with my code, I wanna point out one other thing in the project structure. If I scroll back down to the bottom here, you'll see a scripts directory. We include this by default in the project structure. This gives you a place to store anonymous Apex as well as SQL scripts. This helps add efficiency to store these resources with your source code. For example, if I wanna run one of these queries, I can just open it up and choose to execute the SQL with my highlighted text. As I run this, I'll be able to get the results. And this is an easy way to verify data in my scratch org or sandbox as you develop without having to leave VS code. And you can see here that the results are shown on the output tab. 
Now that we know our way around the project, let's go back to the property filter component. My code's looking good. I just need to save this and then I want to test it. I'm going to do that by coming over here to the test pane denoted by this beaker icon. Here I see all of my Apex tests as well as LWC tests. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and test our property filter component. You may notice that I have an option to test everything and I can also refresh the pane and reset the statuses as I'm iterating through my code and tests. All right, awesome. My test passed, so I'm feeling good about that. I want to do one more check before I deploy to the sandbox. Our realtors at DreamHouse are on the go a lot, and I want to make sure my component looks good on mobile. I can do that by right-clicking on the file, and I'm going to choose Preview Component Locally. Those of you who have checked out LWC Local Development, this command is familiar to you. However, what's coming out soon is that you have an option to not only see it on desktop, which is what you have today, but to see it on an Android or iOS simulator. In this case, I'm gonna choose iOS because our workforce are issued iPhones. And as I do this, you're gonna see my component come up on the iOS simulator. I can interact with it, make sure it's looking okay, make sure it works okay. Awesome, I feel good about that. And now I'm done and I'm going to go ahead and deploy this to the sandbox using deploy the sourced org. I've already authenticated to my sandbox earlier. Now, Nate and I and our team use source control, but while we develop a story together, we share a sandbox. So that's why I'm going to deploy there for now. And I can see that my deploy successfully ran. So I'm good to go. Nate has everything he needs to finish his work. So Nate, over to you. Thanks, Stephanie. So I'm going to continue working on this project, but instead of using VS Code on the desktop, I'm going to use the new Salesforce Code Builder. You see here that I have our Workspace Manager open, showing all the workspaces that my team is using. I can create a new workspace just by giving it a name and clicking Create. In just a few seconds, a full Salesforce developer environment will be created. This environment is provisioned with all the developer tools needed to build a Salesforce application, like the Heroku CLI, the Salesforce CLI, the VS Code extensions, and everything else ready to go so that you can get to work. Instead of using our newly created workspace, though, I'm going to switch over to one that I have ready for this project. Since I know that Stephanie has been working in the property filter lightning web component, I'm going to start there. The first thing I want to do is know how my version differs from the version that she deployed to the sandbox. To do that, I'm going to use the diff tool. We see here that she's fixed a bunch of these linting errors. She's formatted the document and she's implemented this method here that was marked as to do great. And since this is ready, I'm going to retrieve it into my project. I also know that Stephanie was working on another Lightning Web component called Property Schedule. I don't have the source of this in my project, so I will use the org browser to sync it in. The org browser is a single place where I can view all the metadata inside of my org. I can sync down single metadata objects or entire types into my project. Next, I'm going to create a new Lightning Web component. With Salesforce Code Builder, for the first time, I can now create, test, deploy, and debug Lightning components completely in the browser without downloading any software. I am really excited about this because now every Salesforce developer, no matter where they work, can build Lightning Web components. My new component is called Property Status. This is going to be a simple component that will display whether the property is available to show or if it's already been sold. I'll add a little bit of JavaScript to this component and then switch over to the HTML and just add a simple bit of HTML here. One of the things you'll notice is that I get rich code completion, inline documentation, and other great productivity tools right in the browser. This isn't just a text box with some syntax highlighting. It is a rich editor with full features for developer productivity. Now my component's ready to use, so I'm going to hit save, and you'll see that instantly it is deployed to my sandbox org and it's ready for testing. Next, I need to write a bit of Apex. 
Before I start writing, I know that my other coworker Claire has also been working on some of the same Apex classes. I want to sync her changes, but I need to be careful not to overwrite any of my previous work. To sync all my Apex, I will use this manifest. I have a new preview feature enabled that we call diff detection that will enable me to check for differences between code and metadata in my project and the org before I overwrite anyone's work. With this new feature, before the changes from the org are written locally or vice versa, they are checked for differences. If differences are found, they are opened in our diff view. In this case, I see that there is a single difference. It looks like the work that Claire has done won't overwrite any of my work. And since everything looks good, I want to once again sync these changes into my project. I'll use the same manifest file, and that metadata will be retrieved into my org. It will detect conflicts, but this time I'm going to select override, and all of those Apex classes will be written to my local project. Now that I have all the latest Apex code synced from the org, I can get to work. Inside the property controller, I'm going to add a new method to get the property status. Just like VS Code on the desktop, Code Builder brings full feature developer productivity to the browser, such as rich code completion and refactoring tools. I see here that in my method that I just created, I named the variable ID ID. But I see here that in the other method that already exists in the project, it's actually named property ID. This is a great opportunity to use the rename refactor and just fix that to make it consistent. Another cool feature about Code Builder is how easy it is to explore your code. I can use tools like peak references to see how code is used. And it is super easy to navigate through my project with features like breadcrumbs or the outline view. In addition to editing capabilities, Code Builder brings the full Apex and LWC test, debug, and code coverage features to the browser for the first time. Now, I'll run my Apex tests, and in just a few seconds, my tests should hopefully pass, and I'll be ready to commit my work. For source control, my team is using Git. And of course, Code Builder has Git integration built right in. From the UI, I can see all of the changes in my project. I can stage those changes, type my message, make the commit, and last, push the changes to my source repository to kick off the continuous integration and delivery process. Now that you have seen some of the great features of Code Builder, I hope you are as excited as I am about this product. By bringing Salesforce developer tools to the web, any developer can be successful building on the Salesforce platform even quicker than ever. No software to install, maintain, or update. Just click a button, and in a few seconds, you have an environment with the very best Salesforce developer tools. Work where you want and how you want simply by opening a browser. Before we close out, I wanted to cover a few other topics related to, to our developer tools. As hopefully most of you know, we build nearly every developer tool in the open. Our roadmap is mostly public, sources on GitHub, and we prioritize community feedback. We want every user of these tools to contribute, even if it just means a simple thumbs up on a GitHub issue. If you haven't checked out our GitHub repos, I would encourage you to do so. Our tools get better when the whole Ohana participates in building them. The Salesforce CLI is the foundation of both VS Code and Code Builder. And in the spirit of community involvement, we recently open sourced the bulk of the Salesforce CLI and aim to have it 100% open source by the end of the year. There are also a few other features we have been working on to deliver the promise of a great developer experience. We are making it easier to work with multiple package directories, and soon we will support destructive change operations. Next, I wanted to talk a bit about Windows. Most of our developers building on the Salesforce platform actually use Windows, and we know that we have not always provided these developers with as good of an experience as we should. 
This is an area that we are investing significant time in, and over the coming months, we will be delivering updates that will bring much needed improvement for our Windows users. Finally, one of the topics of feedback we continue to hear is that deploys and retrieves are still not as fast as you expect. I am extremely happy to say that we have made tremendous progress on this effort. We already delivered a preview feature that switches the way a subset of deploys and retrieves are done in VS Code, and we'll be wrapping up the work soon so that all deploy and retrieve operations are significantly faster. The chart here shows the magnitude of some of the initial work on performance, and I think you're really going to like it. Finally, I want to point you to the Code Builder announcement blog post. Code Builder is now in a limited pilot and will be opening up to more customers as fast as possible. We cannot wait for everyone to try it out. Thank you so much for joining us virtually and have a great rest of your Trailhead DX. We could all use a North Star right now to help navigate these times. Inspired, we created a web app that allows anyone to create a digital vision board to help guide you through these times and inspire you to thrive and emerge stronger. The app is called My North Star, and you can find it at mynorthstarapp.com. The experience is easy, fun, and takes less than five minutes. It allows you to add your vision for how you want to be during this time, the values you want to prioritize, the actions that will bring your vision and values to life, and finally, the photos that will inspire you. For every board posted on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook with hashtag MyNorthStar, we will make a donation to UNICEF, who are on the front lines helping families all over the world impacted by COVID-19. What does your North Star look like? With COVID-19, companies around the world need resources that will help them listen to both customers and employees so that they can stabilize their business. Get Feedback lets you ask customers and employees what they need and then seamlessly connects that data to Salesforce, giving you the insight to make business decisions that truly matter.